All right, so in this video, we want to create a user's post a specific page. So even unregistered users can visit that. So for example, if I want to see Mike's posts, I can just click on their username and go to the page with all their posts, regardless if I'm logged in or not. So we know we are rendering this card from our component. So we want to open our post card component and right here where we have the username hardcoded, we want to grab the username who created this post. This is where we can use another relationship and connect our post model to the user model. So let's go to the post model. Right here, we want to create another relationship. So before, in our user model, we created a has many relationship. But in this one, we want to create a belongs to relationship. And we want to say that this post belongs to a user. So let's create our function. So we want to call it user since this post belongs to a user. And the return type for this one is going to be belongs to. Then we want to return this, which is post class, belongs to our user class. So in a way, it is the opposite of what we did in the users model. So now we have this user function available on the post instance or the post model. So let's see how we can use this one. Back to our component where we have the instance of a post. We can now access that user function to grab the user who created this post. So we can use the curly brackets and then grab the post and chain the user method. Now, if we use the parentheses here, this would give us the relationship type, but we want the collection or we want the object user and we know that user has a username. So let's see if this works. Just save it, go back to the homepage, and now we have the user's name in our card. So this was created by Mike and John and so on. And let's create another user here. So we have different users, register, and then let's create a post. So I'm just gonna say new post here and press create. Back to the dashboard, you can see it says here that this user, Sarah, has created this post. And if we go to the homepage, now we have posts by Sarah, Mike, John, and so on. So you can see how easily we could create the relationship between these two models and grab the user who created the post. Now we want to create a page. So when I click on this name, go to their page and see only their posts. So let's create a view for it. Under users, I'm going to create a new document and call it posts.blade.php. All right, so first we want to extend our layout. Let's have an H1 here with the class of title. And we want to show the username here first. So I'm just going to hard code it for now. And then the user's posts. So this is our view. And now we need to render it. Let's go to our dashboard controller. And I'm going to create a function here. And I'm going to call it user posts. Then return a view that is going to be that user's posts. Okay, so now we need a route for this one. Let's go to our web. That PHP, maybe right under these posts, I'm going to create a get route and we want to go to user posts. Then we want to pass our dashboard controller and the method that is going to handle it, we called it user posts. And also let's give it a name. I want to say posts.user. So I'm using this sort of naming to follow the convention of our controller. So we had posts index and show and update. So this is gonna be posts.users. So you can design this the way you want. All right, so let's go to this page. We want to go to user forward slash posts. So we get username. Now we want to use this route in our postcard where we have the username, we have this href, right? And we want to use the route helper function and use posts dot user. So if you click on these names, any name should take us to that page. But of course, we want to make this dynamic. So this user part needs to be dynamic. In our route, we want to use route model binding to pass down a user instance as a parameter for our URI. And remember when we listed our routes, we had this syntax here. So the dynamic values in the URI were wrapped with the curly brackets. We can do the same thing. We want to wrap our user with curly bracket, curly brackets, and say, this is now a parameter. So as soon as we do that and go back to the home page, we would get this error and it's complaining about that route in our postcard that says now this route is expecting a parameter, but we are not passing anything to this route. So this is the first time we are using route model binding and we will see more examples of this when we get to individual posts. So we want to go to the postcard where we are calling that route. And in this route method, we can pass a second argument 
that is the parameter that the route expects. So our route is expecting a user because that's what we specified. And we already have a relationship on this post. So we can just pass post user. So remember, this would give us the user instance. And again, you don't want to call it as a function because that would give you the relationship. All right, so let's see if this resolve our first problem. Okay, so we have our homepage. If we click on the name of one of these users, we go to forward slash four, which is the ID of the user, and then posts. Let's go back to home and click on mic user. We get three. So now we are able to pass down that specific user to that page, to that, and we are rendering that view or that page using this method, users post in our dashboard controller. Now, if you want to grab that user, we can accept the model as a parameter in our function. So I'm importing our user model and let's just die and dump that user, see what we get. So this is the user specific page and we are just outputting that user that we are passing through routing. All right, so if I click on this user, we get forward slash four and also this user instance. So if we check under attributes, we have the ID, username, email, and all the properties. So that means since we have a user, we can just grab their posts using the posts relationship we created in our user model using this relationship. So if I just do this and go back to that page and give it a reload, we get a collection of one because this user has only one post. If we go back to the home page and click on maybe John that has, I think, 28, we get an array with 28 items. So it is working. And this is, again, the power of route model binding, which we will see more examples of it with posts later on. All right, so now we want to just grab this user's post. So let's create a variable for it. I'm going to call it users, user posts and set it to this user and then basically repeat what we did up here. So we want to get the latest post and also paginate it in case they have a lot of posts. So I'm just going to paste it down here and then we need to pass it to our view. Much like what we did up there, we just want to say posts is the user posts. So let's go back to our template. And again, we want to render users posts. So we need to repeat that postcard. So I'm just gonna go to our homepage and grab these two divs. So the first one is for post and the second one for the pagination links and just paste it down here. And we don't need to change anything since we called the variable that we are passing down posts. So we don't have to worry about that. All right, let's see if this works. Let's go to Mike's page. We get one post, go back to homepage. Sarah also has one post and John has 28 but we have pagination for him. So right now I am signed in as Sarah. If I create another post, let's just add some nonsense here and press create. We get it in the dashboard as well as clicking on the name, which would take us to that page and any user can visit this page. So up here, we just have to change the username to the actual username. Now in our postcard, remember we used the post model and the relationship we created through this user function. Now up here, we are outside of the for each, so we can't call this post, but we can do something else. Since we have access to this user in our controller, we can just pass it down to the view. So I'm going to add lines here, and alongside with these posts, I'm going to create a user variable and just pass down this user. So now in our template, I can just grab the user username. So of course we get the name. If we go to another user, Mike, we get their name up there. Now I wanna add the number of posts in front of their name. So I wanna say, for example, Mike's posts like this. And then I want to show the number of posts this user has. And we just have to grab the posts and we have a method called total. So this would give us the total number of the posts a user has. So if we go back here, Mike's post one. And I just wanna add a symbol here just for fun. So this is an HTML symbol that looks like that. If we click on this user, Sarah, two, and John is 28. And I just wanna show you here something that we have six posts on this page, right? And up here it says 28, that's exactly what we want. But if we were to use the count method here, which is another method to count the number of instances in a collection, this would give us six, because remember, this is now a paginated collection. So that's why I'm using total here, and it would give me the right number.